move it away from it for a second. Let's see what the general temperature is. It's 97. You think we can get that up to 100? They won't burst, will they? Dude, I'm seeing that thing blowing up. <laughs> We've got some awesome Mexican black king snakes hatching out here at New England Reptile today. You can see, check out those cute little faces hanging out right in there, and this one's already come out of the egg. How cool is that? Look at all these ones that have already hatched out. Ooh, look at how cool. Gonna rattle it, rattle all the tails. Oh boy, it's like Medusa's hair right here. I got a whole bunch of baby black Mexican king snakes right here. These guys have been hatching over the last 24 hours, and look at how cool these little king snakes are. They are snake eaters out in the wild, so even when they're this size, they're catching little other baby snakes and eating them. And then when they, once they get to be adult size, they're eating things like rattlesnakes. They actually have a mild immunity to other venomous snakes, or to venomous snakes venom. And so it allows them to catch and eat venomous snakes, which is really, really cool. Are you gonna chirp more? And if you didn't know what they sounded like, now you know. They blow up like this and they try to make themselves look very big and scary. He's terrifying. It actually also makes them look like they're too big of a meal. The same thing as like beardies puffing up and looking big. A bunch of toads will do that. So these are woodhouse toads. This one looks like a boy, so it will probably croak. Oh, maybe not. So like this is one other exciting thing other than the mossy tree frogs. These are two of the cave geckos from our cave gecko pair. Look at their cool eyeballs. They're bright red. Okay, so what we got in these enclosures right here, or these little tubs right here, are some fresh hatched, fresh hatched. Fresh hatched. Nope. Cut. All right, so in these tubs right here, we've got some fresh hatched hybrid milk snake, king snake hybrids. So these snakes right here, the ones in this in bin right here look very much like your typical kind of Pueblin milk snake. So these are kind of normally what the Pueblins kind of look like. They've got varying levels of white, black, and orange in there. So these ones are kind of a more of our normal looking ones. So these look very much like a milk snake, but that is not everything that we hatched out. All right, so these ones right here are a little bit different. When you take a look at the pattern on these, these guys have like a super irregular striping that goes down their back. So really unusual hybrids. And they, these are called Imperials. Oh, I was gonna climb, climb in my ear. That's... I'm not gonna put that in the Looking good though. If we're gonna be using Donnie's handy dandy heat cannon. <laughs> we're gonna be testing if they go after room temperature prey or Hot prey. Hot prey. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Today. We're gonna call this hot lunch. Stop. We need somebody to hold the second uh, item. Right. You're gonna do in cold prey, okay? All right. So that is 87 degrees. Hey Spencer, how hot do you think it would have to be to get it to really go for it? Um, you want to do more than air temp, probably like 100. Yeah. Hey Rob, come here. Yeah. How how hot do you think a retake would like their guinea pig? Retakes don't care. I've seen chew on snake hooks. Cold <laughs> It's gonna go like this. Oh god. And then Think, rotate it. Do you really wanna do it with your hands? Why not? You're savage, man. I'm not all about that. You know that a lot of people in South America eat guinea pigs? Delicacy. I try it. 100, 104 degrees. There you go, here you go. Alright, who do you think it's gonna go for? So you gotta offer it. Oh. <laughs> that was a launch. They like it hot. Alright. Yeah. Hot lunch, take two. Now how hot was the last one? 100, 104. 104. Right. 100 and, 103 degrees. Alright. So around 100 plus. They Do might it. like it. 
she's got to be one of the ones that like. I have to touch the guinea to know that it's real. Do you think it's just whenever you touch it? Yeah, you can touch it. Three, two, three. Bam. Oh. <laughs> That's all? They just gotta be touched? Yep. Some of them. They just gotta like... They're so cautious about like what to bite and what not to, they're like, I have to wait in order to know what touches me. And so, if I touched it with a tong, would've known that, oh, there's no food, but as soon as it gets touched with a guinea... Hot. Cold. Alright. This bloody phantom. Oh, you want this one. You definitely want this one. No, nope. oh, no. You want the hot one. Trust me. Let's go for the hot one. <laughs> no <laughs> way. <laughs> Look how gentle they are. God. See, we work with our gentle snakes, and they become gentle with you. <laughs> I don't think it has a lot to do with heat. I think it just, it's just confused. Yeah. Oh. Figure it there out. There you go, there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, well, Marty, like where this is gonna go, Connor. Oh, God. Oh, come on! You were too fast! That's okay. You got it. Good girl. What kind of beautiful snake is this? This is a platinum. So this is what platinum does. It makes it really yellow. Turn down a lot. She's pretty agile too, so <laughs> she likes to run. <laughs> Whoa! F Should I get on this one? Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Oh god. Also in the shed. I know what's up. I see her right there. Oh. All right. Bam. <laughs> I feel wind. <laughs> yes, you did. It was a snake hook. What's up, guys? So it's like a thousand degrees, and uh, we're all dying a little bit on the inside and the outside. I look extra sweaty, but it's super cool because uh, summertime is ball python egg laying season here, and we're going to be getting into hatching stuff soon, which is super awesome. So we're pulling a clutch today, and a bunch of other stuff is happening that we're going to go take a look at. And uh, look at that. You don't want to miss this. Uh, so we've got a really cool ball python clutch. This is uh, our blue oyster lesser thing, which is just a really cool, like, hidden jingwoma, soul suckery kind of combo uh, that was bred to a Toffino GHI. Um, so everything in this clutch will be double head uh, for albino and toffee, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so we're just going to pull these eggs. we got a couple eggs that have rolled around, so I'm just going to take these out first and we'll candle them after. Um, but looks like a pretty good clutch, which is cool. And she doesn't seem all that defensive, which is super nice as well. Got a couple eggs wrapped up here. Hi, sweetie. Let's go ahead and grab these. Boom. So we got six good eggs from that. So we're gonna candle these, and then uh, in about 57 days, we'll cut these guys for you so you can see what the hell's in there. Because I actually, I don't know. We don't. Kevin never told us what that was. So <laughs> it'll be an interesting clutch. And now she's gonna try to bite me. They already took her eggs. I know, but she still has that smell, so she's still in her maternal instinct, I have to protect my babies vibe, so she'll probably take a pop or two at me. But Guys, if you want to see some awesome egg cutting videos, because we have some insane pairings happening this year, make sure you leave a comment down below, and uh, we'll make sure we show you some badass offspring. You'll see them when we see them. Uh, wipe your face off of paper. Paper. That's really, I mean. It's what's here, dude. We could have looked like you could have wrung out your hair. Right now. I probably could, dude. <laughs> dude, I was in 12 fucking steam cleaning that cage. Oh. Fucking 320 degree water. Fucking. Oh, no.